Hi everyone, John Lane here, and I am so lucky today to get to speak with Petter Berndolin, uh, who is a stock, Stockholm-based percussionist and drummer, uh, also runs his own record label and recording studio, and for almost two decades, uh, Petter has been fashioning this particular style of drumming uh, to suit Swedish folk music. It actually becomes Swedish folk music. Uh, which historically doesn't have a percussive tradition, as I understand it. And um, so by designing his own sticks, uh, inventing and developing a very particular set of drums and tambourines and cymbals and bells, as well as cultivating this distinctive rhythmic and melodic language on the drums, he's managed to create this wholly individualistic drumming style that really transcends simply being the accompaniment to this music and becomes part of this, this tradition. Uh, and in, in my opinion, I think this work is among the most creative and interesting in our international drum, drumming community. So thank you for being here and, and setting all this up today to, to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to tell you also how I came to find your music because it's sort of one of those funny rabbit holes that happen on the Internet, you know, as you as you explore. So um Last semester, I teach at Sam Houston State University in Texas, and uh, we have a contemporary music festival. A lot of what I do is new music, contemporary music, um, experimental music. And we hosted a composer, Annika Sokolovsky, and she was our guest composer at our new music festival. And she mentioned that she played this Norwegian fiddle, and so she showed us and played, and it was just amazingly beautiful and mentioned that her teach she learned this from her teacher Dan Truman, who's also a composer and fiddler. So, um, so then I started exploring his music, and that led me to um, I was particularly interested in his fiddle uh, music, and that led me to the duo project that he had with, and I'm I'm not going to say the name correctly, uh, Quimian. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, actually. Okay. Uh, Actually, it's O'Reilly. O'Reilly. Uh, O'Reilly. Okay. Uh, but, His first name but, is. But you, you, I think if you're like more correct, may, may, maybe like something like O'Reilly. O'Reilly. <laughs> O'Reilly. But it's O'Reilly. It's, it's O'Reilly in written in Irish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so I found his website and I started listening to his music and that's of course led me to your group This Is How We Fly and uh, from there I just became totally fascinated and started reading uh, and watching your your videos and things online and learning about what you do so that's where that's where the connection is it, it seems strange that like how me a classically trained percussionist would find a Swedish folk you know music but nevertheless that's that's the that's the journey yeah so um so then I watched your, your TED talk and, and how you talked about how you came to these ideas. And so I want to kind of get into this uh, and maybe maybe a good place to start would be to talk about your background. Um, you said that you grew up listening to this fiddle music in, in the north of Sweden. What, what was your what was your background with that music? And then how did you get started as a drummer and percussionist? Yeah, so we, if, if we take it from the beginning, um, when I first try drums. I was 15 years old in school, in music class, and uh, I played something like doo, cha, doo, cha. <laughs> and the teacher said, yeah, you're really good on this. Oh, am I? <laughs> maybe I should <laughs> try, uh, you know, uh, try it some more, maybe buy, you know, drum kit, and, and so I did. So we started a band with my brother and a few friends and uh, play like heavy metal music as you know m most drummers start somewhere around there yeah. yep. and uh, i was 15 years old and and uh, a few years later you know when i started to study more came into jazz music and uh, you know interested in developing my technique more and and so on and it's very easy to slip into that tradition then were you taking drum set lessons like with a teacher learning jazz or were you kind of learning yeah. on your own how yeah. were you studying yeah so so in um, in sweden there is uh, you know all all education is free and um, of course the elementary school and university studies and everything but there there is also something called like culture school or music music school for kids 
uh, you can go there after you finished yeah, after you le- like quit the day uh, in a normal school mm. you can go there so I started uh, directly um, when I was around 15 years old and I had lessons at you know that uh, um, place and <coughs> quite a lot <laughs> I, I started when I was 15 and I was in that school for six years and I had like between two and three and like 15 lessons a week <laughs> Wow! so, so um, th- I, I was actually more interested in that education than the normal school so so this was sort of after school, after your normal school, you would go and, yeah, and exactly, participate in exactly. the music study. E- evening okay. uh, or like afternoons and stuff. And primarily jazz, you were playing, studying uh, jazz. Yeah, jazz it was um, salsa and jazz, like drum, it was uh, music theory and, and uh, oh, okay. different everything. Mm, big band and yeah, it was really everything. Okay. <coughs> and so then wh- what's the uh, what's the connection then to the folk music where you where you grew up you were said you said you were listening to this fiddle music that was always sort of in the yeah, background yeah. Uh, yeah so actually I, I if we if we re- rewind a little bit uh, I was 15 years old uh, I started I discovered heavy metal music and trying to play drum kit and and uh, slipped into jazz uh, because my, the music teachers I had was interested, maybe more interested in jazz than in heavy metal. So, f- following their lead and um, played jazz music for a while. And in where I grew up, folk music is uh, a big part of the community. Mm. So I, I was on these uh, festivals every summer from my from, you know, seven years old. Uh, hearing this music every summer uh, and um, you know seven eight years later I started with the drums but I I still continue to go to those festivals and one day uh, uh, me and and my brother just realized oh we want to play this music but you know he was he was playing electric guitar and I was playing drum kit but we didn't really know how to approach it but uh, we started uh, with what what we had and uh, and that was the start of like my my whole career you know that decision to you know trying to um, approach this uh, Swedish fiddle music with the drums with the instrument that you yeah that I, oh, I yeah exactly yeah that's beautiful so so I so fell, I fell in love with the music uh, and I had my my instrument I already ha- already had so that was that was like what I what I used when I approached. Yeah, that music. seems to be kind of the key point. Is you didn't then become want to become a fiddler. You were like, no, I'm a percussionist drummer. I'm going exactly. to approach this tradition from my instrument. That's mm. that's very interesting. Mm. So, so then I suppose then that's what led you to the um, to the Royal College there, a Royal yeah. Academy in yeah. Stockholm. Uh, at the, can you talk a little bit about how you yeah. got there and? Yeah. So so when I was. Uh, um, when I was, what it was it called, uh, accepted when, when I was, uh, you know, got into the school. Sure. There was, um, I don't know the English word, like like a test. You, you, you're you coming there and... Mm-hmm, like an audition? Yeah, yeah, audition, audition. I think there was maybe 150 people or something in the audition and there were only five accepted. So I was lucky. I, I was one of those five. Persons. Wow. Mm-hmm. And what was your audition? Were you playing this? You were playing the folk music on your drums with yeah. your brother, or did you play solo, or what did uh, you do? Yeah, I played, um, I put an ensemble together, and um, I was just trying to do, do my own thing within the music. And by that time, I haven't learned any, any melodies or anything. I was just trying to do something with the music, uh, with the background that I had by then. And I, I was the first one who, you know, this school has been for 200 years. Uh, in, and it's a very um, old and 
respected school. It was from the beginning was only classical music for you know 150 years or something, but mm -hmm. then jazz music, um, contemporary music, folk music um, was a part of, of the education, and and I think there have been folk music uh, for 30, 40 years or something before, and and no one had been you know. Um, no one had been there with drums before. I was the first one, so uh, maybe they thought yeah. that, oh, this is something new, interesting, and let's see. Um, yeah, let, let's, and, let's as I him. <laughs> and as I understand it, there there's not uh, a sort of uh, percussive tradition with that music. So you were sort of, uh, so it was interesting that you would first be attracted to it, but then they would accept you as a student, as a as a drummer that in a tradition that didn't really have that so exactly. they must have had a lot of uh i mean you must have done something <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. piqued their interest <laughs> yeah. to say wow this there's really something going on here maybe yeah. this is worth worth exploring that's yeah. that's that's wonderful that's fascinating yeah, so, so uh, actually in in the music history of sweden uh, there is uh, uh, like an important thing there in, in like 200 years ago um the church uh, said, uh, "Okay, drums is not uh, allowed here in, in this country we, uh, in in the music, in the folk music. So the drums was forbidden, and um, y you were only allowed to play drums within the military. Uh, and I, th I thought maybe they th the church thought that people get you know en you know uh, engaged." Uh, with yeah, with uh, excited, with overly excited, excited yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. and that excitement was dangerous. So uh, they only want that in the you know military service. So so uh, and there was drums before in the folk music tradition, but everything disappeared. So what I have been trying to do is uh, figuring out how if the tradition would have been you know kept. How would it have been sound today? Uh, oh. So I, I'm trying to investigate that. That's interesting. Yeah. I, so I don't know that history. So what? What? Two hundred years ago, what were the drummers doing? What were they playing? I mean, I know like um, the Bodron in in Ireland. Mm. You know, I, this kind of thing. Um, but what? What? What drums would they've been playing? Yeah, th back th then? there is actually Frame a, drums there or? is a, a few drums uh, kept. Uh, Maybe I don't know three or four, three or four or something uh, still uh, in the museum. But they look like those military, you know, the drums that you like uh, snare drums. Th yeah, very deep snare drums. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, and uh, they are m mainly playing like uh, traditional grip, like with two yeah. sticks. And uh, it's pretty pretty much similar to you know the, the, okay. the way that okay. you play in the in the military music. Okay. I don't know wh where what was first. It was it the tr the um, uh, the tradition, the folk music tradition, or was it you know the the way that they play in the in the military? I don't know wh what was first, but uh, there th there is uh, pretty much. Um, it's called um, Värend. There is a, sp uh, a region called Värend and. That's actually one place that the uh, church said, "Okay, no one, no one in Sweden are allowed to do this, but you can do it in Varen." <laughs> they, they had done something good, so they they got a, a treat. Uh, so see. that's why uh, the tradition was kept. Interesting. Mm. Well, I have to learn more about that. Mm. I, I have to claim ignorance on that. I don't mm. I don't know the that history, but um, that that's that's very interesting. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's let's get back to your story. So you were then at the the Royal Academy, and uh, you were studying with fiddle fiddlers. Like, what were your lessons like? Uh, and I mean, eventually, I read that you or you talked about this uh, in your talk that you mm. discovered Indian music, and that was a big turning point. Can you just kind of talk about your time there at the academy? Yeah. So uh, at first, I had a teacher. Uh, he's he's called Andre. Ferrari and um, he's a magician and uh, 
uh, I thought he 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 was doing, you know, very progressive and contemporary. He has he has fantastic ideas. So I was very inspired by him, and I had him as my you know, main teacher for one and a half year. At the same time, I was trying to learn this uh, complicated um, melodies from the Swedish fiddle tradition, uh, and uh, I was, you know, practicing body movement and technique or coordination and you know sounds and everything with with Andre. And uh, I had uh, this other f fiddle teacher there uh, that was like, I was trying to learn the, the, this music tradition. And then after one and a half year, I realized that, okay, um, if I'm going to learn this music for real, like really, really deep, I have to have a fiddle player as my drum teacher. So <coughs> I took everything I got from Andre, like the, the technique and the way of playing, way of thinking. And uh, I continued like uh, like on my own or, or not on really on my own, but I, I w with fid a fiddle player as my drum um, teacher. And on Andrea, uh, can you say the name again? That was your drum teacher at the... At the Royal Music the Academy. Academy, yeah. And Andrea. Okay. Ferrari as as a car. This Ferrari. You said. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Italian name. So. Um, so you were basically just doing technique and and stuff with him. Uh, yeah. Were you still doing some jazz drumming at that? Was that what he was doing? Or what, uh, what is his? No, uh, Andrea is. Um, um, he's not. He's he's not. He's like this uh, drummer you cannot put in a category. Every time you're trying to label him, he's changing. <laughs> it's like what is it called? Chameleon. Yes, chameleon. Yeah, yeah, chameleon. Yeah. Chameleon. Yeah, he's like that, and he, he's he's fantastic, very inspiring person. Okay. Um. So. Um, he does. Ev yeah, everything that he, he yeah. wants to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than you know trying to fit in uh, in a frame, so so I I was very inspired by by him. Like like the first time I met him. Uh, I, I asked him, uh, like on a festival, this was 2000, year 2000, so uh, 21 years ago. I met Andrea after a concert and I said, oh, hello, uh, my name is Petter, thank you for the concert. And I was so inspired, uh, could I have a lesson from you? Like this was uh, before I, I started, you know, Royal Academy, when he finally, you know, accepted me as, as his student. But first time I asked him, he, sa he said, uh, okay, what do you want to learn? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just so inspired by your way of playing, uh, the way of thinking. It's so different from everything else I've ever seen before. So I, I just want to have a lesson and learn something. And then he said, okay, let's do it like this. If you imagine the sounds that, y that, that you uh, want to have in your kit, like if you uh, close your eyes and listen in within yourself, you could hear a bass drum maybe, you can hear a snare drum, it doesn't have to be a snare drum, it's just a sound that you can imagine in your own, in your mind. And uh, there can be long sounds, short sounds, uh, something with, you know, short and with sustain, deep, high, everything. Try to, you know, make a little collection within your head. Next step find those sounds in physical objects like it uh, doesn't have to be a bass drum it can be like a suitcase or something it can be you know anything and uh, when then when you find found the old sounds that you uh, would ha want, want to have in your kit you have to put them organize them in a way that suits your way of moving your own body language you know so uh, you're going to organize all those things in front of you so it feels like ergonomic for you. And when you have done that uh, and you think that, oh, how do I progress from here? Then you can get a lesson. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great lesson right yeah, there. That's, that's <laughs> my, my, my life. Uh, that's the best lesson I've had in my whole life still.
Uh, Amazing. Yeah, and so so I actually I did that. All all those things I did that and I came back to the same festival one year later. He played there again and I said, "Hello Andre. Uh, last year you said uh, uh, you cannot have a lesson <laughs> with me, but <laughs> you have to do this and this and this." And I went, "Okay, uh, now I've done that. Can, <laughs> can I have a lesson now?" <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> I, "I I would like to be uh, like a, f a little not a fly on the wall, but a fly within inside his yeah. head." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because what uh, did he think then? <laughs> yeah, what what was he thinking? And <laughs> uh, he said yes. He said yes. And then I had uh, the first lesson. Uh, I went down to Stockholm and had the first lesson with him. And, um, you know, I was very inspired. So when I was going to have lesson number two, th this was, you know, the time when you could burn your own CDs. Do you remember? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. so, so I... I made like recordings, like 10 different songs where I used the technique that I learned from lesson number one. And I made a handmade like CD booklet with like 12 pages or something. Well, <laughs> I was, you know, showing my grandkids from, from, you know, uh, from there. And I was writing everything about what I, uh, you know, and I burned that CD and I sent to him and uh, like, uh, Okay, now I'm ready for lesson number two. <laughs> 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 and, and I got lesson number two as well. And um, you know, I, I was very um, hmm, what you what should you call it? Um, yeah, I was enthusiastic about you know the whole thing. Clearly, yeah, yeah. So no, uh, clearly. after lesson number two, some somewhere there, lesson number three was at Royal Music Academy. And uh, I was accepted there, and he, I asked him, "Okay, c do you want to be my teacher?" Uh, yes, uh, that's okay. So, so that that's the that's the start. But like uh, one after after one and a half year, with like continuous lesson every week with him, and I like s I sold my jazz drum kit. I I you know, sold everything, and I was okay. Now I'm going to continue on one really thin track uh, and that's the that's when i when i finally formed the kit that i'm still using today yeah like 15 years later now and uh, at some point in there there was a little piece about uh, studying indian music or, or being exposed to mridungam player something like that did you actually study that music or were you just inspired by that no, what was the connection a a there actually it's 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 a very it's a key point in the in my development because uh, there was two Indian musicians at my school and so I was hanging out with them well like th there was a fiddle player and a and Madame Dangam player and I, I was having lessons like every day for a week with the Madame Dangam player <coughs> and you know you know in their tradition they are learning before they can even touch an instrument, they have to learn the rhythms by by mouth, you know. Right. Uh, and say, tell again, don't tell again, don't and then they play the same thing, you know, you know that. And uh, so I did that with him for for a week. And uh, and then I realized that okay, I'm singing rhythms here, and uh, in my tradition, the, the Swedish folk music tradition, there is something called diddling you know yeah you can s you sing the the um, you sing those fiddle me melodies <coughs> but with the specific syllables that is matching the bowing and the technique and the the um, I idiomatic way of you know making music on, on a fiddle yeah so i realized that uh, this is telegenadon 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 it's pretty much the same as so I realized, okay, if I um, if I um, just remove the the, um, the no notes like the from the it's pretty much the same as the in Indian guy did. So I, I um, yeah. When I've learned that, uh, you know, I, I just switched over to my language, and there, boom, 
I had something new that was w- it. within that idea. Yeah. It's so fascinating that it connects to the to the voice in such yeah. a deep way, you know, and that that's that was already established in the fiddle tradition. I didn't realize that. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'd heard you sing that before, but mm. I didn't know that that was like how how it was also learned and taught. That's fascinating. Yeah, that's because totally, the, I mean, it just makes sense. They fit together mm. so well, those two uh, approaches, yeah. you know, with and the singing. This, this music is is um, it's like uh, 250 years old. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was no way of of um, making a tradition, you know, pass to, to the next generation. There was no other way than to do it by ear. Oral tradition. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, all stories and everything before that, before there was a language to, to write, you know, the, the Icelandic stories. And um, that, that uh, is like a thousand years old or, or something. It's a uh, it's an oral tradition that and uh, it uh, it comes very natural, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's maybe we can talk since you've got all these fantastic cameras and everything yeah. set up. Maybe you yeah. can walk us through <coughs> your your setup and how how you arrived at this uh, this very unique set of drums. Yeah. So. Uh, he- here we have um, my drum kit. Uh, I can walk you through uh, everything. Uh, the my this is a ten inch tambourine. We have an eight inch uh, tambourine here, and snare drum ten inch. Oh wow! Mm. And then there is a, a tom here, fourteen inch tom. And what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of drums are these? Are these the uh, custom made drums that you? What, can yeah, you tell yeah, us what, exactly. th- what those are? Yeah, uh, exactly. This this drum here. I've had I had this type type of drum for twenty years or, or something, and there is a, a Swedish builder called uh, Stefan Lund, who who made. Who makes those? Make and it's just a plastic uh, plastic head tambourine. Exactly, uh, yeah. <laughs> y- you can buy this uh, online for like twenty euro, <laughs> but but this one is a little bit, you know, as you can see, it's it's a little bit bling, a little. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is actually gold, but, but okay, m- but but not not uh, no no. And high just quality, like aluminum jingles or what kind of jingles uh, are on it? This this is the standard jingles. Uh, I don't know wh- what kind of metal it is. And uh, and thi- this is brass. This this two little one here. It, it, okay. This one is handmade by by a friend of mine. Okay. Here in Stockholm. But uh, the thing the thing with this drum is the the pitch bending. Yeah. 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 The uh-huh. that that it's um, you can push the skin. You see the thumb there. So when I put it on the on the stand, I can use uh, the finger. Uh. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that distinctive way of uh, you know the finger playing, like like in the Indian mm. tabla drumming mm. or redungam, and then one stick. That's also very distinctive to your style. Ex- exactly. Uh, yeah. So uh, I can have uh, if I have two sticks, I have the same sound in, in both hands. Right. But here I have. I can do so many much more, many more things, and I can change. So. And this thing we have from uh, from the tabla. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I like um, I like the Indian I like Indian music, especially the the, the drums. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, and I, I realized also that th- this is a thing. Uh, it can be uh, it can be a, a good way of. Um, 
making the yum, the yum, the yum. If if I'm following following the the bowing, like the yum, the yum, the yum, the yum. Yeah, yeah. I get so it. We, yeah. Can, we can come back more to, to the tambourine, uh, this tambourine, uh, the small one here can do the same thing. Just a different, Just you know, a higher pitch, timbre, yeah. higher pitch. And this is actually a normal, not a very normal, but it, it's a traditional snare drum. Yeah, these are very distinctive looking drums. I mean, the yeah. shells are they are they round shells underneath yeah, uh, there? They the, look kind of and the, the rest of the drums here is is built by uh, an instrument builder. He, he's called John Lee uh, oh, in so Ireland. Beautiful. So he's a furniture maker. Oh wow, so that's so th beautiful th so drum. Th this is um, this is made by Irish oak, and as you see, the hardware is is built. In hidden inside the yeah mm. yeah so uh, so it's a round shell underneath that sort of uh, interesting uh, geometric uh, yeah th there is normal drum you know drum heads in inside here yeah but, but we wanted to, to you you can have a little <laughs> you can see a little bit here yeah but yeah uh, uh -huh. but I I like this very much <laughs> And and can you say again the name of the drum maker? John Lee. John Lee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he he has uh, like I, I, if you if you Google John Lee furniture, you find him. <laughs> and and th this is actually the only drum kit ha he have built. Oh, okay. So he custom ba made this to just to your specs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he like spent two months in his workshop ma making this. And and this, there is only one skin here on the on the tom. Uh huh. On the tom, just one head there. But this sound is so nice. The oh yeah. The, the meta, metal hoop here is and yeah, it's not not that natural like as this sound. Yeah. Yeah. And the bass drum is an 18 inch bass drum yeah. and as you can see from this angle here it's a uh, like thi this this is 10 inch and it's maybe yeah nine inch or something or eight, maybe eight the, the maybe uh, only eight inch yeah deep and the, it's very the hoop is like four five shallow yeah mm. and then the <coughs> symbols of course um, and I have some some bells here as well. And my hi hat is um, seven inch. Are those just splash symbols that you've got yeah. on your hi hat? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Just splash. And and I have um, I have um, like I have a contract with Bosphorus symbols. Uh huh. So, so I can uh, I can you know I can you know email them and say oh please can you make a, a, this type of symbol for me and and they are uh, you know they are sending and you know if you That's notice nice. this is this is like super thin uh, yeah extre wow extremely thin uh, yeah. all, all of these are very very thin. and that's so you can also play because you play them a lot with your hand right uh, as I, well i use this uh, this drumstick here and uh, this is a made of bamboo and the the side that I'm playing on is is oh I didn't split oh, okay it's split it up maybe so you can see it maybe a little you can see here oh yeah mm -hmm. uh, so if you listen here on on the side that is not this any treatment <coughs> that is more like, sounds more like a normal snare drum but this <coughs> maybe now you're on zoom so the audio the audio isn't maybe perfect but but um, this is the soft side, and then yeah. So it's much yeah, it more makes a dy dynamics in this. You can play really, yeah. really soft. And I, I wanted to have symbols that that is reacting when I play, like super, super soft. 
Yeah. I want the symbol to, you know, starting to, you know, move. Just yeah. a tiny, tiny little hit. Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, so, so that, that's the whole uh, kit. Well, it, it sort of makes sense with what you said earlier about how when you had that first lesson that you imagine the sound, mm. you know, and then found the objects to make those sound. Mm. I mean, it goes back to your very first lesson, how you sort of yeah. a, could yeah. arrive yeah. at, at a, exactly. a sound like this. That's uh, that's totally fascinating. And uh, w when I, um, for example, uh, everything is everything comes from this main from the main tambourine sound, yeah because yeah. Uh, if i have a low sound here and the high sound uh, and i have the low sound there and high sound there i have low sound here and a high sound there yeah and um, so um uh, i i could if i playing like Can, I can make the same thing on different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious to know about the drums, like how you found a furniture maker who knew how to craft drums so expertly. That that seems like mm. uh, a rare find. <laughs> yeah, I, I was lucky <laughs> because uh, <clears throat> you know it, what what happens what what happened was that uh, my band. This is how we fly. We had an artist in residence at. Uh, Solstice um, Art Center in uh, in Ireland, L like a big cultural center where you know they do music, arts, and you know everything. So we were there and for a, actually a couple of years and did you know concerts and projects, and uh, um, I think it was um, yeah um, w when I got these drums. Uh, they asked me, so okay, do you want to do an, some individual projects here? Uh, yeah, and uh, one was one in the band was making music to a film. Uh, one was making like a recording a solo album, and the third one was making a like a duo concert with with um, a dancer. And uh, I was, oh, wh where am I going to do? Uh, and I asked, maybe I could. Uh, build a drum with together with some like find a collaboration uh, locally so i asked them uh, do you have any person here that you know is good with wood yeah we have one uh, we have one, one and uh, let's see if he could be interested and just yeah emailed my my idea there as uh, interesting if uh, are you interested in collaboration with me making a drum and uh, he, he was, I never made drums before, but uh, he thought the idea was brilliant. So uh -huh. finally, uh, he had made the whole drum kit. <laughs> it was not only one drum, but because he was very uh, um, glad for, for the question. Yeah. So um, I, I have this 10 inch tambourine as well uh, in the same. But uh, it no, no, today I have this one, but. Uh, yeah. But uh, so there was a five piece drum kit that was in an art exhibition there for like a, oh, wow. a couple of months uh, at the gallery at the art center. And then I was going to try to play them for the first time. <laughs> and actually, I didn't know if how they were going to sound. Mm, because uh, I had an idea because I have had this, uh, you know, same setup for 20 years that Stefan, who, who made this drum, built the whole kit. So he was the one developing the, the whole idea w with me. And so I had that kit and I, I thought maybe after been playing with this kit for 20 years, I had some ideas how to, you know, develop and, uh, but I didn't know if it was going to work. But the first concert there, when the, like the premiere concert of the kit uh, at the Solstice Ar Art Center, John Lee was in the audience and I <laughs> okay, how is it? And then uh, I was amazed by, you know, it was so good. <laughs> there was like a complete match with uh, my ideas and, you know, 
and the experience I had uh, with his knowledge about how how to handle wool. So it, it was yeah. uh, um, uh, what's it called Syn synergy. Synergy, it yeah. It became so much more than I could ever, you know, expect. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so okay. before he made those drums for you, you were you were playing on another set of custom drums that you had designed. Yeah, exactly. And um, more more with metal hoops and look more like the, like this drum. And uh, yeah, if you see videos out there, uh, on you, there is you can see, I have um, a couple of other drums. But it, it looks exactly the same, but you know, not with this fancy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Things, but uh, the setup looks. If you're sitting in the audience, you, you s it looks like the same. But yeah, okay. Sounds, and and that was different. your your earlier kits were developed by what what drum maker? Uh, he's called uh, Stefan Lund. Lund, okay. Uh, L U N D. Yeah. So yeah, started with that with like 2001 with him. 2001. Mm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um. Well, so you mentioned your band. This is how we fly. This may be a good chance to kind of talk about that group yeah. because this—that's how I sort of discovered your your drumming. And it's funny because um, when I first heard the group, I just heard an audio recording first, and I didn't realize there was a dancer uh, yeah. as part of the sound of the group. Yeah. And then I saw the and then I saw this video and I thought, oh, because <laughs> I was wondering how is he making these beautiful brush strokes and playing all this other stuff it just seemed impossible there was too many layers and so then i realized that the dancer uh is amplified in a way and and this beautiful um beautiful dancing is sort of amplified and becomes part of the texture of the music i just found it to be really beautiful um and um it's mm. so interestingly layered with the other music so you want to talk about your your band and how that came together and your yeah. approach to that yeah, so uh, <coughs> Quillen O'Reilly, who was who formed the band, um, he had met the rest of us in the band individually, and he like he he he's a smart guy. He 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 imagined something that was uh, like a a match, <laughs> uh, match made in heaven. So like the first uh, after the first time we we met, we said. It was meant to be a one-off thing, you know, on the festival in Dublin. Oh. But um, luckily, there were three people in the audience that came up to us after. Hello, do you have any booking agents? I want to book your band. <laughs> three people uh, on our first concert. So, we're, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we 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 wanted it. So, so that was it. Was a very good start. But uh, what was I think uh, one thing that you mentioned there with the dancer and me, and it was something, um, how shall I say, like I have been uh, diving into Swedish fiddle music and try to ex express that on the drums. And uh, Nick Garris, he has done the same thing with uh, like American Appalachian music and also Irish music. And uh, he is <coughs> dancing the rhythm of the fiddle tunes. So mm. he had been d doing that thing for like many years. And I've been doing my thing for many years. And then when we met, it was like a hand and a glove. You know, we yeah. have developed the same thing. But mm -hmm. but the one, one of us was a hand and the other one was, was, was the glove. So mm -hmm. we have done the same thing, but in two different ways. You know, we, me with my hands and he with his feet. Right, two different disciplines, but yeah. Yeah, but we've done the same thing. So when we were yeah. playing together, it was like we locked into each other like the first minute. Oh my God, <laughs> we had the same reference here. Yeah. So, and, and that's why you probably not realize that it was two, you know, percussionists. Yeah. Like when you listen to it, you, you cannot, you cannot tell w which one is him, which sounds comes from him, and which sounds come from me. And when exactly. we play, when we play together, uh, I don't know what is me and what is him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we are one person. Yeah, it's fantastic. So do you do you work out? Um, do you work out your arrangements? Like, what are how are you rehearsing with him? Like, how are you deciding? 
you know, how does that work? I, I'm curious. Like, um, like w when I play, um, maybe I can I can show you by make by mu music example. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So so for example, if I if I have tune that is. Um, what is that? What rhythm is that? <laughs> you might think it's one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. songs uh, so he's expressing the rhythm of the melody it's, it's, it's the same thing so yeah. uh, uh, of course he he doesn't you know work with this um, um, o oval rhythms that I do in the American in Irish music it's more uh, like a continuous pulse mm -hmm. <laughs> More, more those kind of rhythms. So So uh, that could be, you know, my way of, of expressing a fiddle melody, and, and his way as well. But but he has his sound. So that that's that's how we do it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, it, it works really well <laughs> when the two of you play together. Yeah. It's it's really it's really magical. So that's beautiful. Um, w would you like to just? play some more for, for us I think that would just be great to yeah. hear you hear you play some a absolutely more. Um, <clears throat> I, I could um, um, I could play something May maybe I could try to um, first I, I'm going to show something um, like how the hell <laughs> how it how does it work you know uh, so uh, it's ma mainly it's uh, if you have a melody, um, for example, da ya dum da lin da ya dum da da di la di dum da di da lin da ya dum da ya dum da lin da ya dum da da di la di dum da di li do. One, two, three. So there is all always this stick is always doing so. <coughs> Two and three, one, two and three, up and down, one, two and three. You see, it's not so, 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 yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three. The two is a little bit dumb. Oh, little bit longer, short, long, short, short, long, short. Don't let in the wind, don't let 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 the wind, don't
So this one goes like this. And Then it's filling in, filling up with the rest of the rhythms with the hand. One, two, three, like dark and high and low, like so low, 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 This is more like uh, when you are practicing or learning. So I'm starting to move this hand around. something like that <laughs> bravo that's so magical yeah i can hear that melody i mean the, as you sing it I, you know i can hear it emerge mm. through through all the drumming yeah. as you as you go that's that's really amazing so i'm curious to know if you um like are there other are there other drummers that are like studying with you or following this this tradition that you've this style of this approach that you have are you yeah are you passing this on to other drummers there or yeah. what's happening um, with that actually when i took my master's degree in at the royal music academy in stockholm um, that was something like 13 years ago or something and i I was thinking, hmm, how, because what I was, my master's thesis was about how do you, you know, um, uh, what is it called, uh, when you transfer something from one language to another. Yeah, translate. Yeah, translate, translate yeah. How yeah. do you translate fiddle music to, to drums? Um, wh what What is the important, you know, uh, what is the essence of the music? Uh, um, and how do you, w what is, you know, needed to be, ex you should hear, now, now, you, now you, when you heard that melody, you maybe hear, like in, within that rhythm, how, how, you know, because that, that's because uh, I added some things, I didn't just say, I played something else, you know, the, the structure and the things from the bowing and the, from the, the whole phrasing and ornamentation and everything uh, built yeah. in there. Uh, so the 
the master thesis was about that. But mm, until my master thesis, um, the master education there um, in Sweden and all, uh, all um, other artistic master um, thesis has been uh, written before. So I, I realized, how, how could you write about this? And this is an art form. Uh, if you write about it, um, then you're like a musicologist or something. You're not a yeah. musician. So, right. so I, I wanted to have um, like an, an interface or what you call it, something that uh, something else than, than just a written language to be able to show what, what it's all about. Yeah. So, so I um, um, I made a website actually. So I, I recorded like it was I think it was 140 videos uh, describing you know the whole thing the whole translation process the every drum and how it's function uh, how it function within within everything and um, I made like a, a website with a, a complete explanation of what I, w I was doing um, unfortunately um, the s website was programmed in something called flash and you know what happened with flash later on it disappeared it from the internet it disappeared yeah, yeah. so the, the website is now uh, gone but uh, oh, no. I, I, I have it I have all, have all material and I have a plan to get it up again it, it okay. has been there like for 12 years uh, so uh, it actually just a few months ago it you know disappeared finally but um it's coming up again no worries okay uh, okay but uh, <coughs> what uh, was uh, what was i talking about you had a question there I uh, the question was answer. just you know about uh, other other are you know are yeah. you working with other drummers yeah. to develop this further or you know are there yeah, other sorry kind of I, I, I lost coming behind then. you so uh, I had teachers at the Royal Music Academy, n not the field teachers, that was, you know, but other ones that said, okay, please, please, you know, this, this, you have developed something very unique here. Don't show it to anyone <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> they want to steal it from you. <laughs> and and uh -huh. I was thought about, I, I thought the same, you know, my teacher said, and okay. I was trying to, you know, practice with locked door <laughs> and everything <laughs> because I realized <laughs> the other students was imitating me, you know, oh. and I could hear from another practitioner, wait, that's my thing, no, <laughs> 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 don't take it from me. It's not developed yet, you know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, I realized that everyone want, wants to, to take this, you know, from me. Uh, or borrow it or what you should say they're inspired of course they want to do yeah uh, that was that was what i did with andrea ferrari i, I copy every single you know um yeah everything like i i spent yeah. years copying <laughs> him and other g other drummers that i was inspired by before that yeah. so i realized okay they're going to do this anyway so that i, I have to make the whole thing public so that was was what why I made that website. So here it is, and yeah. um, and uh, there has been people in many countries having you know copying this stuff. Th there are in, in uh, Austria and the United States and um, um, you know Canada, uh, Canada and not not in U.S. actually so far as, as I know. But Canada and Japan and Germany, Estonia, Norway, Finland. Uh, there are everywhere. And uh, Stefan, who, who made the my, my first kit, you know, they are he gets an email from Japan. Oh, can you build a Peter Bandolin drum kit for me? <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So he he's, he's ships ships still uh, today ships away to, um, and of course maybe some people are you know handy making their own kit as well. But uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. this this kit uh, shows up here and there. And well, that's, I, that's I fantastic. Th yeah, well, I think it, it makes me think of a couple of things. First, it makes me think of um, I studied jazz drumming with Ed Sof at University of North Texas. And um, Ed, you know, would tell these stories about uh, because he he 
played with Woody Herman, the big band, mm. and he knew wow. a lot of these famous drummers and saw them, you know, mm. and how he would tell stories about, um, you know, going to a clinic by yeah. Tony Williams, the wow, great drummer, wow. Tony Williams, you know, and, and, you know, he's playing his ride cymbal, his very distinctive, mm. you know, fast ride yeah. cymbal pattern that Tony Williams could play. And, um, you know, somebody at the clinic asked, man, how do you, you know, how do you do that, you know? How do you play so fast with your hand? And, and Tony Williams said, "Well, I just play with my hand." You know, yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to give it away. You know, yeah. he didn't want to. He didn't yeah. want to tell all of his secrets. You know, so it reminds me of that. But what's so funny is that there there are so many people that, of course, then would study Tony Williams and learn mm. about you know and transcribe and learn and um, he he didn't actually have to teach it. It was there in the playing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and you you can just be inspired by that. But so I thought I thought of that when I thought of you, and then the other thing mm. I thought of was um, this idea that's so transferable to to like what I do as a classical percussionist, you know, playing the playing the snare drum. Uh, there's this thing that I try to teach students, which is touch. Yeah. You know, like you're playing a Scheherazade excerpt or some you know some orchestral mm. excerpt, um, or Capriccio Espanol is a great example. Mm. There's this part in Capriccio Espanol in the snare drum part was dum da da bum da da bum da da bum. And I try to get students to feel this kind of bouncy, you know, mm. folk style of drumming, mm. to to use a very generic way of yeah. saying it. Mm. Um, but there's there's a certain touch that you've developed, and I think it comes from that oral tradition of singing mm. it, and and you know, um, so I think there's something very valuable in what you're doing, outside of this folk tradition mm. that that you that you play in to. Mm you know, classical percussionist to jazz drumming. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many applications to your approach yeah. of, of how you, your the touch of mm -hmm. what you're doing, oh, you know. I, I think that's, uh, I think that's really um, something that we can all, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. learn. Yeah, for example, um, traditional drum kit, like, yeah, actually what, what, what was coming from Tony Williams and further, you know, rock drumming, like, yeah, it began with jazz and, and then you know Beatles and everything. Oh yeah. And and, and now now you have this this traditional. I also have a, uh, I also have the <coughs> hi hat. And and I I have, I have the elements here. Three toms, yeah. down, hi hat, and same. Off. I have ex exactly the same thing here, uh, as yeah. as they have. But mm, I'm thinking a little bit more that I'm speaking with my drums when yeah. I'm talking uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm making a conversation so when we talk uh, like when we talk I could <laughs> play something instead like I'm not screaming at <laughs> you know right the uh, yeah, dynamic yeah and the, the touch dynamic is, yeah. in pop music is like flat um, uh, no offense, I, I love uh, you know uh, hard, you know rough, uh, heavy beats and, and stuff. I, I like that as well. But but for me it's a, it's a little bit not it's not so. Uh, I'm more um, interested in the, the sensitive stuff than the yeah. You know. So uh, yeah, me, that's me too. <laughs> yeah, it's something that is uh, forgotten a little bit. Like uh, drum yeah. drum solo. I, I think that's yeah. Sorry, what did you say? No, I, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, especially young young people, and I, I teach at a university, so I, I have mm. students, you know, 18 to 23-year-old yeah. students, mm. and, you know, it's just whatever's uh, biggest, loudest, kind of in your face, that's that's what captures yeah. their, uh, you know. Yeah, see, drums, if you Google drum solo, uh, <laughs> there's a loud, there's an almost 95% lo loud stuff. Uh, I, yeah. don't, I don't know why. Why? I, I don't know. I mean, I think the, I think when media, I was I don't know. Um, um, yeah, I think when I was that age, I mean, I liked loud things too. Mm. I did, uh, you know, marching band drum lines and uh, played in rock bands. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I think kids like loud stuff, but mm, it it, yeah. it it continues into their, you know, uh, even into more sophisticated mm. studies. Mm. Uh, this this you know attraction to mm. the to the big, loud. Um, yeah. So I you know, I'm kind of, I have a, like a yeah. thing that I when I'm teaching I. I have not so many students, but um, now and then there is someone traveling, maybe from another country or 
someone at the Royal Music Academy they want you know lessons uh, it could be a drummer it could be anyone uh, it could be a cello player a saxophone player whatever they, they want something yeah feedback from me and I, I I am happy to give feedback to anyone that asks but what wha a thing that uh, I, 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 I find myself repeating <laughs> is the thing about uh, dynamics mm -hmm. because often when a student comes and the student is playing something for me yeah I listen and I, uh, I ask the student then okay uh, what is the absolute absolute softest thing you could ever play on your instrument um, you know the re it's so soft that you can barely hear it but you can hear it uh, let's call that dynamic level one and uh, and the absolute loud not I'm not going to <laughs> destroy your yeah. e ears now but you know I can play really loud if I want on, on this sure. snare drum you know and that is the level that is a 10 the absolute loudest it's possible to play and then I ask okay the piece you played for me now wh where was that in dynamics mm, in, in between four and five maybe <laughs> the whole time uh, w w why why did you choose that dynamic level uh, I don't know <laughs> you know it was meso forte all, all over the place so then, then I started to work with um, with dynamic okay let's play the same thing now again but play it between dynamic level one and three and uh, that is not so easy to do because you're you're in you're listen you're stuck in, in a little bit half loud half soft tra track in the middle of everything yeah so that that is uh, not something i'm very interesting in uh, researching and developing and i, I worked with yeah. to be able to play and and uh, for me it was it came from the fiddle because I had my uh, drum kit uh, like a normal tradi traditional drum kit in the beginning and I realized oh this this instrument is too loud for a fiddle <laughs> when I'm playing mm. with the fiddle I cannot hear the fiddle because everything I do on the drum kit is you know sounds best when it's a little bit louder yeah and th cool. the drums didn't really sing uh, when I was, you know, touching them, yeah. but with this stick here and with these sensitive skin here and these uh, super thin cymbals, I could play like a big dynamics on a very low level, and that is matching the acoustic uh, level on volume on the on, yeah. on the fiddle. So, yeah. uh, so normally, if there is a band with like five people rehearsing, I am the one who need microphones. <laughs> because i want the no, no, no i have now i have microphones on the drum so you can hear like the low frequencies here yeah. but uh, without the microphones you cannot hear that uh, in in a room yeah so uh, that's why uh, microphones is a very very important part of the drums we haven't talked about that yet yeah but i want to be uh, on a stage with 500 people in in the audience not people in in a bar <laughs> like more in the concert hall where they, they are quiet so yeah. they, they could hear when I put my finger here here and snare drum and they could hear that and uh, there is yeah. a there is a connection we are listening to each other like super soft things it's, it's even more soft than my voice mm -hmm. if I'm talking at the same time and playing My vo my voice is, is is stronger than the playing. So my voice is this loud, and the uh, and then I, I can you know put the volume up. Uh, yeah. If I want. But with the, the microphones, it gives you kind of a depth. The, the depth of sound right you get the yeah. lower frequencies yeah. that you can't hear like mm. you mentioned right that's what yeah. the microphones accomplish exactly. for you not not for volume but for quality of yeah. sound uh, and the if uh, so that's as much a part of the setup as the drum itself right mm. 
if you take a drum and, and play it, if that was the microphone he hears. If the micro the microphone here is, right. uh, is um, here here it's there, it's just five, three, yeah. three four centimeters from from the drums. So the microphone is and actually is that a condenser? Exactly. So the microphone is listening yeah. like here. So, so that is quite interesting. If you take the listen here, that was the microphone is hearing. So um, that's and the softer you play, the more round uh, and and the, you know full range sound. Yeah. And if you hit harder, then then there is more of the actually hit yeah. Mm. yeah so the yeah. could you talk about your you know how you learned about um and your your concept of miking the drums like what kind of microphones are you using mm -hmm. and when you play with the group i mean it's the the miking is not there to amplify it's there mm -hmm. to mm, make make the sound deeper richer yeah but yeah. then you also have the volume aspect of it too i mean yeah, that you have to dial yeah, in so so uh I have a recording. We are in my recording studio now, and uh, last week I I recorded a, um, a duo, and they had twenty six channels, <laughs> so it, on two people, uh, so quite many microphones. There was a line, a, lo a lot of you know um, bu microphones built into their instruments, and there was uh, different setups around them, and. Wow. Uh, my goal every every time when I record is to gain stage. Uh, you're familiar with that word, gain staging. Gain yeah. stage. I, yeah. I guess I don't know yeah. that. I can explain. So, uh, like for my drums here, I have one mic there, two, three, four, and five, five and six here. So what I want when I record this. And I want to listen back in the mixer. There should be the failure should be on zero. So, so the gain, you know, the the way everything, the taps where where you adjust how much is coming into the system, mm -hmm. is going to be matched. And the, yeah. the the master, if the master failure is also going to be on zero, and the the listening level should be like no, a normal level. And uh, so, so I do that with with all those twenty six channels, and uh, and actually actually that's the same thing I do when I put microphones on my drums. Uh, I I'm choosing microphones that um, have uh, like the same level. So when I come to a new venue and put up my own microphones and place the microphone placement. And uh, so our engineer, it doesn't have to do anything. The EQ is flat and the faders is completely flat. The sound is perfect from the beginning. Mm. Uh, and how I came to uh, that level, uh, I did it by uh, at Royal Mu Music Academy. We had a studio, like an advanced studio with like a big SSL, you know, mixing console, all microphones, everything. They had everything there. And uh, I rented like from different shop music shops and I borrowed and I, I came up with, uh, I think it was like 25 microphones or something. Uh, so I I put on this, this drum here, the I put one mic there, and then I play all the sounds, and change microphone, <laughs> try it again, and I, I tested them all yeah, out. Yeah, tw twenty times, and then yeah. I, then I also did like this that when the the microphone A was here, I played on this drum to to see how much of this sound, how this sound sounded in that microphone. Yeah. And, and I played here as well and on the here to see how that uh, that was also in the evaluation. Yeah. Mm. And then um, ne next mic, same thing, next mic. Mm. And I did that on all sound sources here. Wow. And I ha I had, today I have, I don't have a mic on the snare drum, but in test I had seven sound sources. 
Like one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven overheads. Yeah, mm. the overheads. So, so I did uh, that, and then I went to a company called Intelligent Sound in, in Sweden. Here, there is a blind person. He's from Norway. He's building speakers, and he, he's a genius. And he has the biggest ears. I yeah, really big ears. He, he mm. has been blind since birth. So he's a really good listener. Yeah. So we had like uh, 200 sound files and we listened through every one of them. <laughs> Me, him and a third person. And he was like blind and he, he said, oh, that's one, that's the one, that's the best one. <laughs> and I knew which one was which, but, but um, I also tried to make the test like a blind. Uh, for, for for me as well, but he w he was blind, so yeah. he's blind. So so then then we came up with a, a, a selection of microphones that was the best ones, and that was actually uh, uh, Omni microphones, condenser Omni microphones, uh, uh, by DPA Danish company. Omni condenser and microphones. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. So I used that those DPA mics for like ten years or something. Then a, f uh, a friend of mine, Jörgen Tudresson. Uh, I think if you're if you're into uh, pro audio and studio equipment, um, you know uh, him. He has this is this is he this is his uh, like flagship microphone, and you, you can find them in like in the you know most fancy studios in in uh, in. Um, United States and England or Germany, all of the place, all over the world. He, he's a he is a master, and he, he uh, actually has also made mm. Omni microphones, and that's w what I use here. So the DPA DPA was best until I tried his microphones, and mm. oh my god, <laughs> they are better. Yeah. Uh, so I, I use them now. Uh, wow. Here I have in like a normal a AK. G, G one one hundred twelve on the bass drum. On the bass drum. Yeah, that's uh -huh. what people say. Oh, you get feedback with Omni microphones. Yeah, but uh, if you play um, with the sound pressure level as I do and have th this close, it works really well. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's great. Yeah, so it's a very comprehensive good. kind of uh, journey to figure out your sound, it both yeah. in both from the aspect of like the playing mm. and the drums but then also this other aspect of, of amplification yeah so uh, yeah that's that's amazing mm. great yeah well um i feel like we we've covered a lot today uh i guess the the last thing that that would be good to to hear from you is uh you know we we've talked a lot about students and teaching students and mm. other other things but i i think there's a lot to learn from your approach to drummers who play in all kinds of music, mm. all, all kinds of things. Um, I think what resonates with me the most about some of the things you said is the connection to the voice and the speaking, mm. um, because that's something that I do and that I'm interested in in my own work, but also that I teach students to sing, sing it and then play it, you know, even mm. in, in a yeah. you know, simplistic of terms, mm. but, but still connecting with your voice. So I wonder, um, maybe to close, we could talk about, you know, what advice you have to uh, to musicians, uh, maybe young people that are that might be seeing this interview, or mm. uh, you know, early career, uh, you know, just advice for developing mm. your your own style and voice. Mm. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> best tips. B the, b I think if I should say one thing, uh, I just have to repeat uh, my the best lesson <laughs> drum lesson I've I ha ever had this thing that mm, just close your eyes and li find the sounds in your own head and uh, that I the lesson I got from Andrea Ferrari close your eyes find all the sounds you want in your head find them in phys physical objects and just uh, work with your your body and to be as relaxed as possible to the ergonomic and and think outside the box but how do you think outside the box 
you know it's not so easy to think outside the box when you're like in the box you have the box around you how, how could you think from another point of view that is really difficult yeah. so what i did when you know i played like this uh, the hi-hat is here so i wanted to cross my hands all, all the time because mm -hmm. that was what that was my box and and just to so think of okay think that you could open up but the high it was there so i you know it's <laughs> my thought uh, wasn't as powerful as my routines and my pattern that that i already had in my body that was more powerful than, than you know uh, ability to think in an another way so what i did was i removed the hi hat and i put something uh, like this here in, instead like so there was nothing to hit there with my right hand and uh, yeah. i had i had the, the drum kit like that for uh, like two years or something and uh, what was happened then was that i i i didn't go there with the right hand because there was no nothing to play there and uh, so it it became that I, I, I was opening up much more uh, playing more like this and when when all those uh, you know the, the pattern to just go there uh, when that one was gone I put back the hi-hat so so that that's things you can do you can also remove the bass drum oh, but how can I play without the bass drum um, it's easy. You, you can have the bass drum here instead. And uh, and then uh, when you put the bass drum back, There is even more powerful power there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so th that's I think that is my. That's something I, I want to leave to, to people yeah. listening here. That, that if you have if you are having troubles of thinking in another way, do it physically. Remove something. The remove the snare drum. Uh, not not for a day. Remove it for like three months or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Really get get open some new pathways yeah, yeah exactly well and i love your idea of uh, just you know you have a stick in one hand and your mm. hand in the other so mm. you can do manipulate and do different things uh, bend the pitches and that, that that's also a thing that uh, is very distinctive mm. about yeah. how you play you know yeah that's it's something as well to for people to try uh, because uh, you you can do things can do the same thing with the fingers so for example a paradiddle this one the classic one and if, uh, if someone in is listening on this that it has two sticks and the drum kit you know what, what you can do with to bit to bit to bit to bit to bit to and just move move er everything around. But if you throw one stick away <laughs> and uh, try, maybe it's not so easy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> continue digging, 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 digging in the same place, and you will find more and more and more. I can, I have an example. I think it's here somewhere. Yeah, here. Let me show this. Here, you see this drum. Mm -hmm. You know why it looks like this? It's because I made the. Oh, just rubbed the uh, surface off of y it. Yeah. Yeah. The batter and uh -huh. I was practicing this movement for like months and then oh, I saw a pattern here yeah and <laughs> practice again and, and I did that four times here <laughs> and here <laughs> so, so, so this is a this is like 
uh, one year or something practicing. Yeah. Same, same, same thing. And that is something I want to leave in the, um, yeah, contribute with. If you continue to do the same thing, and you will come up with a lot of feelings about, oh no, this is boring, or it doesn't lead to anything, or no, I want to go with, out and do something else. I want to play something I already know, and I want to jam with the band or whatever. But if you just continue and continue and continue, like thousand hours, there you have a treasure that's waiting for you. Yeah. And uh, but but you you only you only get the, that specific treasure by repeating the thing, like many times. I mean, and many times more times yeah. than you can even think of. <coughs> um, so so th that's that's yeah. also something I want to share that I have done that. For example, I. Um, I was practicing with my band, a, a trio, with a saxophone player called Hanna Viskari and a fiddle player called Mia Marin. Uh, Hanna is living in New Zealand now, Mia is a fiddle player, from, uh, she's living in Sweden, Gothenburg. Uh, but we played, as we were rehearsing a tune uh, three times a week, we rehearsed the same tune. Um, three times a week, and we did that for six months. And we, every rehearsal was about two hours, uh, and we, we kept rehearsing. And the thing is, we knew the tune from the beginning, <laughs> and the first <laughs> rehearsal we already knew the tune, but we were like repeating, and and uh, after like months, we could like in in the you know sixteenth bar on the third beat like the, si the two 16 notes there uh, on the uh, we were like bending them a little bit to the side mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that was my uh, part to lead them in that little little detail uh, so we rehearsed you know that little thing and in the bar before there was something else happening I, I, I'm not meaning arrangement more that how um, how you could you know lean the beat a little bit forward front and how you could like slow it down a little bit and go a little bit faster like mm -hmm. a micro dynamics in level and micro in dynamics in, in tempo how, how you know the timing and stuff so we, we were working with that tune for six months and then next six months we were working with another tune <laughs> so after one year we only had two tunes but we knew them so well, so that level of, you know, w what's the English word for when you're like you're really tight together as a band? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that I know what you mean. Yeah, that level uh, um, actually, um, it's not so easy to reach in. in. Maybe if you have a thousand concerts, if you're touring full time with the band in for years, may maybe you get the same level of connection uh, yeah but uh, you if you don't have a tour with th thousand gigs you can just do it in the rehearsal room instead yeah same thing well I, I love that there is this idea that you can because um, I, I think a lot of musicians are very uh, how do you say like product oriented or, or um, mm, they want to produce something right yeah. they want to have yeah. a, a thing and mm. it's always been my approach that, uh, you know, I'm always more about the process. I'm very much in, in more in line with kind of how you're how you're talking about mm. uh, this rehearsal process rather than always having a goal that's set mm. in front of you or, you're, you know, you're going to do mm. this performance or this album or this whatever the thing is. Right. Um, but but to go deeply into the process um, is is really important for mm. our for our development and to do that with a group seems like a, a wonderful gift mm. a, an opportunity mm. to be able to do that and not be pressured to have to produce something i mean mm. here you've you've got 
you've got two pieces you know it's not enough for, for a it's not enough for a concert yet yeah. it's not <laughs> enough for an album but but those two things are really great and and to just to keep following that and and developing it yeah. that seems like a wonderful yeah. uh, a uh, wonderful uh, thing uh, to be able when, to do when we did that that thing it, that it was like almost it's yeah i think it's actually 20 years ago or maybe i 18 and 19 years ago we did that work together with the trio and i still benefit from that work now like 18 years exactly. later yeah yeah so that's something not to forget as well uh, that uh, you're, you're talking about we have to have a product we have to have a thing we have to have something to yeah. market we have to something to post on facebook or instagram or whatever something to show, look here is our thing yeah look yeah? at me <laughs> look at me yeah it's nothing wrong with look at me i i have a lot of look at me inside well you, you have there's some time. level of that i you're in there's some level of that yeah. that you have to do but yeah but the depth. I, I mean i mean look at no, now i can show something uh, that is mm, maybe not able to post it on facebook but i have something now after 20 years of, of if i'm working with the drums that is uh, maybe for me it's worth more than something you know uh, fancy thing that you Novel. Yeah, throw, yeah. throw out yeah uh, it, it's worth more it, it's like a long-term relationship with yourself <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah we um you know i i uh i'm interested in and have practiced in buddhism for a long time mm. and there's this uh when i first met the teacher at the the Houston Zen Center mm. in, down in Houston, um, Galen Godwin is her name, and mm. she said, uh, you know, I went to a class where beginners, you know, introduction to meditation, and you, uh, you know, the first assignment was, you know, we, we sat for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, and then we all left with an apple, and she said, mm. your assignment is to eat this apple mm. yeah. <laughs> mindfully, you know, very, very thoughtfully mm. eat this apple, and as you eat the apple, think of, you know, the the sunlight and the water mm. that, that went into producing and then you know so yeah. anyway there were mm. these kind of assignments that she would give us but i told her that um you know that i'd arrived at this from from studying uh john cage and his music mm. and sort of getting getting interested in the philosophy of all this but i never practiced it yeah and i mentioned that to her yeah i never practiced it mm. but of course then i you know we, she knew that i was a musician and that i had this long practice as a musician and mm. she said well you already have a practice yeah this is just an extension of what you already know how to mm. do you know you already know how to focus and practice and it's true that that mm. had then um, defined my practice up to that point was being able to be in the moment mm. and and concentrate yeah. and and that's essentially what mm what you're doing when you when you're meditating you're just mm. you're just doing nothing <laughs> yeah. but yeah. uh you know you're purposefully doing nothing in a way but um anyway it, it has that sort of philosophy mm. and um to it and you know there's the um when i studied with al adi at cincinnati he mm. he um introduced me to zen and the art of archery i don't know if you've ever read that that book no, no i haven't mm. it, it, i've so heard it's a, about it or, yeah or it's archery, a beautiful like the yeah. Yes, archery. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the bow and arrow, um, and and it's about this Westerner who goes to Japan to study Zen, and he he ends up in this uh, monastery where their practice is, is archery, mm. and what he learns through the study is that they're not actually trying to hit the target, yeah. Th which seems like the point of it is mm -hmm. to hit the target, yeah. but that's not the point of it I I at all. It's mm. the point is to just practice, you know, yeah. just do mm -hmm. that thing, and so I think that's very. Uh, much in line mm. kind of with your with your idea yeah. here yeah so you know. y your story about the apple there um it takes me back to to the paradiddle i was talking about yeah you can see you can see the paradiddle as a like a finished product something to show and um, i think many people today thinking that okay uh, the paradiddle is for example, so one here, two here, uh, same thing again, and then one, one, for example. And then, then they, 
you know, make something out of it and show it. And then they are done. And for me, that is a little bit of taking an apple and <laughs> gone. <laughs> Uh, for example, what can you do? I'm talking about digging in the same place. Uh, uh, so there is so much more. That, that little simple, simple paradiddle thing, that can be um, like an, like an uh, artificial thing from a factory with apple taste. <laughs> or it, ca it can be an actual apple, or, or it, ca it can be like an organic apple that has been you know, taking its time to grow and uh, have a you know, really fantastic taste. It can be so much. So let me just um, show what I mean by playing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm only going to make that paradiddle now. And uh, I'm trying to <laughs> do it the, the Zen way. Uh, <laughs> or, or just be with the phrase and and see where it can go and and um, develop and put it in different colors and feel the taste, the, the smell and the feel of it and uh, everything. But uh, th like this is an exercise then, it could be an exercise. Uh, but you have, to, it, it's still an apple. You ca it cannot be something else. It, it has to be. You cannot, you cannot transform it to a pear, not in this exercise, maybe in another one. But um, so, so I, I try to uh, play a little bit here now, uh, see what happens. Um. place I, I, I lost the, the you know the pattern but yeah like 99.9% .9 it mm -hmm. was the parody the nothing Parallel. else everything yeah. only but quite many colors right yeah, yeah. right yeah. so exactly. so th that that's how I like to uh, approach everything the they use the basics and develop the basics into something that has more like color and uh, yeah dynamics and so yeah hmm. just as a uh, uh, musical comment o of our <laughs> discussion yeah well uh petter this has been really fun for me uh, i've so enjoyed getting to talk to you and mm. and see your uh see your setup and and learn more about what you do this is thank you so much mm, for sharing thanks, thanks. I, I really appreciate it 